My name is Cliff Mass, and I'm a professor of atmospheric sciences here at the UW. I'm also the undergraduate advisor as well, so I do, I do both teaching and research. I've always loved weather, so even when I was a kid, you know, if there was an intense storm, I was out there. So I've always loved it. Um, but then, you know, when I was in college, I got interested not only in weather, but the computer side. So I really liked the idea that we could model, we could simulate the weather. For me, it was really exciting that mathematical equations could be used to actually do something useful, to actually simulate and forecast the future of the atmosphere. I thought that was really neat. Um, my specialty is numerical modeling and the weather of the Pacific Northwest, and I'm also very interested in the effects of mountains. It's what makes the weather different one place than another place 20 miles away. Uh, for instance, it can be absolutely dry and swim, while we're getting a half an inch here, and on the whole river valley they're getting 10 inches. So these contrasts that are so fascinating about our area are really derived from the mountains. People love the weather. People like to talk about the weather. Um, they do that for a number of reasons. One is because the weather affects their lives. And in fact, on the East Coast, it's going to really affect their lives. And so here it affects you whether your tomatoes will survive overnight. So they're interested in that reason, but there's another reason. I think for a lot of people, weather is sort of like a naturalistic religion. I mean, it represents something that's greater than us. It's, it's nature, but it's also power. You know, that's why people like to be out in a big storm, right? Just experience the power of it, you know, the majesty of it. So I think people are interested in weather for a number of reasons. And it's also something that we all experience. So if you're at a, at a cocktail party, people talk about the weather, right? Because it's something that brings us all together. We all experience it. So there's a number of reasons, I think, that weather is so unifying and so and such, such interest to so many people. Well, I got into outreach because of the impact of two individuals. Uh, one was Carl Sagan. I was an undergraduate at Cornell. And in those days, he was really into popularizing science. Uh, he was on The Tonight Show and he was writing very popular books. And, so, and, and a lot of that rubbed off. And you know, I've had conversations with him, and he told me that it is really important for scientists to interact directly with the public and the media, that we just can't let others do it. And so you know, that had a large impact on me, and I got interested in that. The other person I worked with subsequently was Steve Schneider. Uh, who's at, who was at the National Center for Atmospheric Research and then later Stanford, he was, he's very much into climate. Uh, and uh, he, he was a popularizer too. So I've had the impact of those two individuals. And uh, so I got into it myself. Another reason I do it is it's a way of teaching science. It's a wonderful example of a natural system. So, I, so people can learn all about radiation. They can learn about you know, cloud physics. They can look at, learn, learn about basic physical you know, mechanisms. They can learn about Newton's second law. They can learn about all these things, and meteorology is a wonderful tool to do that communication.